David Ricardo was born into a wealthy Jewish family in London, 1772, and he's one of 17 children in the family born to a Dutch merchant who emigrated to Britain. When he was young, he actually did not go to school. Instead, he worked in his father's investment business. At the age of 22, he created his first bucket of money through his own business, starting with a capital base of 800 pounds. In 20 years, he retired with over 1 million pounds, which is approximately $100 million in today's currency. Just goes to show, kids, it's not about what you know, it's all about who you know. His first contact with economics is at the age of 27, where he was inspired by Adam Smith after reading the book The Wealth of Nations, which got him interested in economics. Later on, he went on to publish the famous book Principles of Political Economy and Taxation, which led him to a successful reputation and giving him the place in the cl great classical economist group photograph. Unlike other investors who often overreact to the importance of events, Ricardo was able to use his knowledge to make a great profit. When Europe was in the panic of Napoleon's return to France, the increased probability of war caused the British securities to sharply decline. However, Ricardo seizes the opportunity and invests heavily in government securities before the Battle of Waterloo. After Napoleon was defeated, Ricardo gains a significant amount of profits from the investment that he made prior to the war. It goes to show that he's the real winner here. After retiring at the age of 42, he decided to dedicate himself to the new science of political economy. Later on, he goes on to publish one of his most famous books, The Principles of Political Economy and Taxation. In this book, he questions the landlord class's contr contribution to society. In its questioning of the landlord class's contribution to society, the book was hailed by the industrial class and influenced the political forum in Britain at the time. Before we discuss the political ideas of David Ricardo, it's first important to know the social background in his time period. So let's begin. Ricardo lived during a period of time where everything was in chaos. More specifically, Britain was in chaos. There was great social conflicts, as well as unstable political issues happening in Britain. Following the Industrial Revolution, the population of Britain rapidly increased, putting a pressure on food outputs. And with the Napoleonic Wars poor crop yield, food reserves were heavily drained. While Adam Smith saw society as a whole family, Ricardo saw clear divisions emerging from society, and he divided them into conflicting groups. There were three groups in Britain at the time. There was the working class, who worked on low wages in the factories. There was the industrialist class, who made the money by running the working class, and the aristocratic landlord class, who received money from the land that they owned. Ricardo wasn't very happy with the landlord classes. He questioned their benefit to society by gaining profit only at the expense of others, while they do none of the work. In other words, he's saying they're lazy. Ricardo stated that the working class would always have to struggle to survive. The rise of the industrial classes had gained profit but lack of representation in National Congress. And so, aristocratic landlords would always be superior to the other classes. Now that we've discussed the social background in Britain, we can now discuss Ricardo's ideas. In general, Ricardo's ideas are very much similar to Adam Smith's, however, they're a more refined version of Adam Smith. Ricardo agrees with, with Mr. Smith's notion that the concept of the free market economy can operate harmoniously without government intervention, this government intervention being known as the invisible hand, I'm using air quotes here, and this concept was most effectively used by David Ricardo. Furthermore, just like Adam Smith, David Ricardo also disagreed with the ideas of protectionism. But wait, what's protectionism? Protectionism is the policy of imposing a direct tax on imported goods to a nation in order to reduce its supply. The purpose of doing so is to protect domestic industries that cannot stand the competition with industries from other countries, often bigger industries. In order to illustrate this idea further, let's use an example of protectionism that David Ricardo himself faced, known as the Corn Laws. Around 1813, the British Parliament, in which the aristocratic landlords had the most representation in, proposed to impose tax on grains imported from other countries, reducing the amount of imported grain into Britain. But wait, didn't you just say that Britain had a food shortage? Yes, yes I did. I think you can all predict what's about to gonna happen next. The supply curve has shifted to the left due to food shortage, and plus the attacks on the imported goods affects that curve shift further. This ultimately rises up the price of a bushel of wheat to twice an average worker's weekly wage. That's pretty horrendous, and eventually the industrialists realize they need to raise the wage in order to keep their workers healthy. This all means that the industrialist profits are reduced. However, high grain prices keep the profit to the landlord because of the high land rents. No wonder Ricardo calls them lazy. The good news is, in 1840, the industrialists succeeded in repealing the corn laws and becoming the dominant class in Britain. 
David Ricardo's theories contributed heavily to the success of the Corn Law Refueling. But now let's talk about his theories. His first theory is the Iron Law of Wages. When he first proposed his theory, he believed that wages should be determined by free market conditions. He reasoned that the rate for reproduction and its replacement for laborers are very high, so therefore, labor's wages would remain maintain subsistence level. A higher wage would potentially increase the population by lowering the rate of mortality. However, this would not necessarily increase their living standard, because a bigger family means there are more mouths to feed. But wait, there's a conspiracy. Bah, bah, bah. Ironically, the greedy industrialists use David Ricardo's notions to keep their worker wage at the minimum while claiming that they're doing society a favor. Yeah, right. David Ricardo's theories actually played a part in making low wages become the symbol of the working class, counter to what Ricardo actually intended at the beginning. David Ricardo's next theory is his theory of the comparative advantage of trade. To start, it's obvious that a country can produce a certain good more efficiently than another country. For example, OPEC countries produce crude oil more efficiently than other countries in terms of cost, labor, and other extraneous variables. When country A can produce good A more efficiently, while country B produces good B more efficiently, trade between these two nations is mutually beneficial for both parties. However, Ricardo was the first person who realized and explained when, even if a community is capable of producing various types of goods efficiently, a comparative advantage can be established between both communities when sharing and trading the profit products they can each produce most efficiently. In conclusion, this belief in comparative advantage is what led David Ricardo to become the strong advocate of free trade during the period in which Britain imposed high tax on imported goods to protect the local industries. He disagreed with protectionism because he believed that the local landlord classes contribute very little society but are receiving most of the profits from the protectionism where other classes have to perform all the work. Due to this income disparity, Ricardo was worried that Britain's economy would potentially stop growing due to the fact that none of the profit was going into the majority of the population, and most of these landlord classes consumed a lot of luxury excess goods with this profit, whereas other classes are suffering from the economic crisis that Britain was experiencing. What economic connections can be made from Ricardo's ideas? These two major theories are known as the Ricardian Distribution Theory, the Land Rent Laws, and the Ricardian Trade Theory, the Comparative Advantage Theory. Ricardo's ideas have heavily contributed to the success of the repealing of imposed taxation on imported items. So, effectively, David Ricardo helped reduce and end tax protectionism by the British government. He carefully established many complicated laws for the rent of land in order for landlords to sustain profits from other classes while still maintaining an econ economic harmony. Today, America, Canada, Hong Kong, and many other places use this free market economy and his theory of the iron law of wage brings a significant impact to the working classes, even though the effect was not his first intense.